depending on where your parents are. If your parents are Muslim, you go with them. If they are pagans, you follow them. Hindu, they follow them. Idol worshippers, you will be following them. If your parents are Christian, you also follow them. When you grow and you have your freedom to decide, you can change religion depending on what you hear. So what we hear is what we base our belief and our philosophy. So what did you hear before you decide to join Christianity through the church? There are other religions. What did you hear? The song said, I heard thy welcome voice. What a sinner hears before deciding to join the religion of Christianity indicate how far he can go in this journey to heaven. And that is then also the main cause of believers rejection and frustrating the grace of God. What we have been hearing or what we heard Either it will cause us or it will help us. First Corinthians chapter 15, 1 and 2. First Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your son. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Apostle Paul has also delivered a message to the Corinthian church. He did not include what he told them here, so we don't know exactly what he told them. So that means the people in the Corinth or believers in the Corinth have heard something. And according to Apostle Paul, what they have heard will help them if they hold on to it. What did you hear before you join the religion of Christianity? If they do not hold it, they have believed in vain. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Beloved, 
the problem we are going through is what we have been heard, we have been hearing. Witness can Paul say, one thing people should be careful about, the company you find yourself in, the friend you keep, the church you attend, the pastor you submit to, the messages you hear or you listen and what you want. So the messages you listen can have influence with you. Recently, I got a, a video from a friend and I have laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed with a small young baby, young little girl was asking her uncle, 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 do you want to go to heaven? The uncle said, yes, I want to go to heaven. And that lady said, that you want to go to heaven and whenever you see any lady, you say, she's my life, she's my life. Uh, is this how you, <laughs> is this how you go to heaven? There's a lesson here. According to what that lottery girl has held, what she has heard, she has based her belief on what she has heard. So to the best of her knowledge, if a believer wants to go to heaven, you don't need to chase women, and you don't need to chase men. But to the uh, understanding and what that uncle has had, she responded to the lady that, uh, that little girl that, yes, he wants to go to heaven. And to him, chasing women cannot cause him to miss heaven depending on what he had. So beloved, what we have heard, like I said in my note here, will indicate how far we can go in this journey. And dearly beloved, what I'm going to do with this morning before I bring what you need to hear, this one is what did you hear and how much it has caused you without your knowledge. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to do with today. I told you I will do it systematically, gradually, and then until I cover all the subject, from then I'll give you one bonus of the will of God, and I'm done. Because what I'm sitting down here is, is, is a waste of time. Some people are even getting angry. They know they have been saved and they are going to heaven. So what are you sitting down here talking about good church, bad church, covering, don't cover, painting, don't paint, all this kind of. Uh, lives are they are believe and Christianity is only in the heart. That is what they heard. They heard that Christianity is only in the heart. So what you are saying about all this in to them are rubbish. About three years ago, and an elder visited our church. He heard the message. He was so happy. He asked me to add him to the group where I'm posting the message. So I added him over the group. Whenever any message comes, it brings some people and it removes some people. So one of the messages removed him, Queen, he deleted himself. Why? Because of to the, to the best of his understanding what he has heard, that message is, it looks like insult. So he deleted himself. And I was telling the people recently that right now, last month, of December, he passed away about 65 or 66 years. He had died. So now he is in a better position to let us know or to know what he had and what he is hearing that he didn't want to hear again. He had known the truth about it. I don't Who is telling the truth? Whether me or what he has heard. So to this little girl and his and her uncle, the little girl has heard, if you want to go to heaven, you don't have to chase women. But to that uncle, as long as he still believes in Christ and he had a pure heart, and chasing women cannot take his salvation away from him. So there is no cause for Allah, depending on what he has heard. So what we have been hearing 
is what we are basing our belief on it. So this morning or this afternoon, this evening, as whatever time that you are watching, I want to take you to help you how believers are rejecting the grace. Because here he said, that is the main cause of believers rejecting or frustrating the grace of God. Let me read from King James. That gives me the word I'm, I'm looking for. King James verse in Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. Galatians 2 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ is dead in vain. I do not frustrate the grace of God. And I also said, I do not set aside the grace of God. Frustrate, set aside, reject, ignore. So I have four point and four groups of people in this world that are frustrating the grace of God. Last week, we let you know that salvation is Salvation has stopped you from continuing going to hell. So, what you need to do is to embrace that salvation. So, the first point is the type of grace believers are rejecting or frustrating. The first one, the grace to come to God through Jesus Christ. There are some believers, there are some people. In this world, even friends or colleagues, they believe in Jesus, but they, because of what they have heard, to them, it's not joining a church that will let them have Christ. They believe in Jesus as the Son of God, and they are living their life. But for them to join a church, that is not a problem. So they are frustrating the grace of God, stopping them from going to hell. We were condemned to hell, hell fire. He stood my place and died for me. He stood my place and died for me. I was condemned to hell, hell fire. He stood my place and died for me. He stood my place and died. If you are human being that you hear my voice and you have not been embracing the grace that God is using Christ to stop you from continuing to the direction you are heading toward to, you can ignore it today. You can frustrate the grace today. You can reject the grace today. A time will come. You realize you have made a mistake. As I'm sitting down here and I'm trying to run up with this tax or ministry here. Those of you that are used to send the message to you. I think this one will be the last because I don't know who likes it. We have group that we post it there. Not everybody in that group so like the messages. So if I put this to you, if you like, you can subscribe or you can let me know. That one I'll feel comfortable to send to you. If not, today is my last message. Because believers and unbelievers are all alike, frustrating the grace of God, one way or the other, because of what they have heard. Because of what they have heard earlier. If they hear something that is different from what they, what they have heard, they, they, they reject it. Instead of considering to find out whether it is good for them or not, they reject it. A minister said he was sending across his contact. After preaching, he sent it. I used to have my copy every day. He minister every day, share it on the Facebook, the other social media. According to him, one of them, the lady received, and 
she gave him a test message that he should stop sending preaching sermons, the word of God, the form of preaching to her. The minister asked why. She said, my pastor will not be happy about it when, she see, when he sees it. So, the pastors, uh, everyone is looking for people. The more people you have indicate how great or big you can be in this world. So, they know some, some of them have good messages, some of them have bad messages. And in Christianity, like we let you know last week, everyone that has come to God, you have been saved. And you have been saved forever. Nobody and nothing can take your salvation away from you unless you leave it, you put it down. That is what we know. But in order for you to make use of that salvation and go to heaven, you need a church that can help you to work out of it. To some people, that what they have heard, there is no necessary of working out of the salvation. All the passages we read last week, it doesn't mean, it means nothing to them, according to what they have heard. So in Christianity, there are some groups. One group said, once we have been saved, as we all know, we have been saved forever, which also indicates that salvation is taking us to heaven. That is one group. These people don't waste their time on such messages. And we have other groups that they also believe that after you have been saved, they believe the possibility of falling from grace. After you have been saved, you can still make it to hell or heaven, depending on your lifestyle. But they don't know disobedience and sin. So they focus on sin, sin, sin. They have left disobedience behind. So when you talk about sin, they will agree with you. When you talk about disobedience, they will not agree with you. Why? That is what they have heard. So this is what is going on. So the second point is frustrating the grace to know the truth which set free. That is what the first point. Unbelievers, those who do not have Christ, as you have been hearing, you are so rejecting. John 1, 9 to 18, Ephesians 2, uh, 11 to 13, John 3, 16 to 21 and 36, all reveal Christ to you. Accept Christ so that you can be stopped from the direction you are heading toward to. If you die in that state, you will regret for living for yourself or living for the devil instead of living for Christ. If you continue to believe that you can so you are good without Christ, or you are good without church, no problem. Like I said, we are delivering the message and what comes from you. So the second point are believers, people that have embraced the first grace to come to Christ. And as they have come to Christ, Christ said, the people also came to him. He was presently there with them. And he said, I'm going to teach you. If you hold on to the teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you know the truth. And that truth will set you free. The people rejected the truth. At the end, they pick up stone to kill him. And he slept among them and ran away. Why? The people rejected the grace to know the truth. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. John 8. 30 to 30 to 59. I'm reading just this portion and the latter portion. To the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. So what about if they don't hold it? When they have been saved, what about the teachings? We cannot be his disciples. So he wanted to provide the truth, the knowledge 
for them to know the truth. They rejected, they frustrated the grace. The grace to know the truth. They rejected it. Then you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered, We are Abraham descendant and have never been slave to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? So to them, this is the first time somebody is telling them something they did not know. If you don't know anything and somebody is telling you, to me, you, you take into consideration. Instead of ignoring it, keeping your options closed will cause you to frustrate the grace of God. Keeping your uh, uh, options closed will cause you to frustrate the grace of God. Number three. So you need to know the truth. And that truth alone can set you free. John chapter 8, 30 to 36, 57 to 59. Or John chapter 8, 30 to 59. If you are not familiar with it, you can read it. You see how some people got advantage to get knowledge. To be taught to how they could become true disciples of Christ Jesus. So at the end of Christ's ministry, he was thanking God for only 11 people. The 11 had become fully disciples. Only 11. What about the rest? They are yo yo. They were following him, but the people that he confidently affirmed that they, they have truly accepted the truth. Only 11. What about 1,000? Yo yo. So as we have embraced the grace to come to Christ, that is not the only grace. Apostle Paul said, I will not frustrate the grace. I will not set aside the grace. I will not reject the grace. What, the grace, what grace are you talking about? The grace to know the truth. You need the truth. Without the truth, all that you have been wasting, you are wasting your time will be in vain. You need the truth. That will qualify you to become a true disciple of Christ Jesus. And you are rejecting the truth. When the message is posted, you ignore it. You read Proverbs chapter, chapter 1 verse 7. It said, the fool despise the instruction, the teachings, and wisdom. It is the fool that despises it. He saw it and you never open. He have it and you will never open. To see what it contains. If that person is wise. You open to see if the message is making some sense to him. The message is speaking to him. But because of ignorance, the truth. They are rejecting the truth. And that is why you can't find the truth. Then number three. Frustration the great to Get knowledge through the teachings. There are some people that are also frustrating the knowledge. They are frustrating God. God wants to help them to know the truth. And they are not. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. We have read and read and read. You also, as a believer, you have read. God said, my people perish or destroy from the lack of knowledge. Why God is not providing the knowledge? They don't like it. They reject it. He said, I have appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to them. But they said, no, we will not listen to them. Why? Because they have heard something. They have already heard something that this knowledge you are giving them, no. Or maybe they have despised the person delivering the knowledge to them. That this man cannot. So the Jews embraced John the Baptist and rejected Christ. Even though John the Baptist testified about Christ, yet the people say we knew his root. Who gave birth to him? Who his father is? We even know his sisters and brothers here in this town. He cannot be our Messiah. He will not accept him as our Messiah. Go and stand at the crossroad and look. 
explanation for where the good way is and walk in it. So in this way, God has shown you the right way. I myself will give you pastor according to my own heart to feed you with this knowledge and understanding that people are rejecting the grace of God that God is sending to them. They are rather following the impulses. So therefore, says Jeremiah 3, 15, Jeremiah 6, 16 and 17, Proverbs 1, 7. They are all on point number three. Those of you on our platform, Heavy Citizen, I've taken the picture of the note, so I will send it to you. If you are also, you have subscribed and you are watching and I don't know that you are watching and you want the note, I have it on my phone, I can send it to the people in our group. If you send me a text message, I will send it to you. If you are on Facebook, you want it because I don't want to waste more time as you don't like long messages. So some passages we have been reading regularly, I don't need to go over. If you have just come across and this is your first time, look for part one. This is part two. I'm, made, I'm naming them part one, part two, part three until I finish so that I can direct you to go and look for the continuation. Amen. So at this point three, the four Bible quotations have been provided in the previous one. The last one, frustrating the grace to run away from demonic churches. Frustrating the grace. Second Chronicle chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord rain throughout the earth to strengthen those whose heart are fully committed to him. You have done a fully thing, and from now on you will be at war. What they used to tell you that Christianity is only in the heart, only in the heart. Some people have a pure heart. Some people have made a covenant with God. And God has been graciously guiding them to the right place. If you are looking for a school for your children, you don't even need to think about which school I should send my children to. But the reason why we think or we take into consideration it's the school that will help them to be properly educated. So also in churches. Without the knowledge of some people or ignorantly, they don't know that some churches are gathering people for the devil. They don't know. So if you have a good heart, the eyes of the Lord is raging throughout the whole earth to help those whose heart are fully committed to there are some people, the way they are committed to God in those wrong churches. God's grace has been going around, reaching them to save them from those situations. But they have bowed their head down. And they are not looking anywhere. And that, therefore, God cannot reach them. That is what he's talking about. You have done the foolish thing. Sometime 2015, I, I did the teachings about Titan, tithes. And the deaconess was in our group. At that time, I have not done this. We, did, we even didn't have church. I never knew we were going to have any church. So we were on the prayer line and I did the teaching. And a deaconess told her pastor, I heard the teachings about tithe. I have never heard it before. She had never heard it before. So the pastor called me to send it to him. And I sent it to him, the audio. After listening, he didn't get, come back to say whether 
what he think about. And he developed hatred. And it caused the woman that they can to stop following me. Why? In our Khan language, we have the saying that Okwasienitia na Guregu. The game will be over when the foolish person become wise. That lady never knew that tithe is not for only the ministers. No, she never knew. I proved to her through the scriptures from Old Testament to the New Testament. All of them Bible proved. That is why in the New Testament they said there was no needy person among them. When the money come, they share for everyone who need. If you are in need, you come to church. The church take care of all the need. It wasn't only for the pastors. In the Old Testament, it, only, it wasn't only for the pastors. That lady was at a point of her eye to be enlightened, to be opened. Like that Reverend Minister who encountered a similar situation. So this one, the lady who had got enlightenment closed her option. So she was going to continue to worship God in ignorance for some people to fool them. So God had been graciously tried to reach out to some people. But because of our commitment to pastors, commitment to churches, we have burned our head down and we are not looking anywhere. We have kept our options closed. This is my church and that is all. <laughs> this is my church and that is all. Whatever here, good. Whatever that is not here, bad. The grace of God is just being frustrated. You are rejecting the grace of God to know the truth in order to run away from demonic churches. Let me read the passages here for you. I've read the Chronicle. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth to help those whose hearts are fully committed to him. The way some people are worshipping God seriously, fully committed, in wrong places, God has been graciously tried to read them, but they have kept their option open. This is my church and that is all. Revelation chapter 3, 8 to 10. There are some people who don't know that some of the churches belong to the devil and the purpose was, the purpose is he, the devil has hired that subcontractor to gather people over there. If the devil did not gather the people in those places, all of them will run away from paganism, idolatry, other false uh, religion to join Christianity. So when you join Christianity, you are saved and you'll be going to heaven. So he has stopped the mostly idolatry and has used them to start a church. Let's see what is Revelation chapter 3, 8 to 10. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. God has opened, he has set before you an open door that nobody, so that's what you call grace. Not even demon can hold you unless you hold yourself by rejecting or frustrating the grace of God to open a door for you to walk out by you say, no, this is my pastor. I will die here. I was telling my lady friend, no, you are in the wrong place. Walk out from there. You are in the wrong place, sister. Walk out from there. She didn't walk out. She had died there and for that minister to bury her. And the minister is still going on. 
<laughs> I have prayed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Because of the lot of strength that you have, that you have kept the word of God, even in those, those places, those demonic churches, you have tried to prove to God that you want to serve him. So he opened the door for you. What comes from there? Why? That place is the synagogue of Satan. It's the place that Satan is gathering people to fight God. Where the fire from hell, heaven, will come down and consume them. So now that you have life, what comes from there? That is not a place for God. If you love God, worship him in the church, in the church but not in satanic church. So when I was teaching about the practices, how you will be able to identify the churches of God and the churches of the Lord, it was provoking some people. It was provoking some people. So what were they doing? They were frustrating the grace of God. God was trying to open their mind for them to identify the true church which belong to God, so that if you, it is God that you want to serve, go and worship God there. But rather, since they were, or they are frustrating the grace of God, they are rejecting the grace of God, they are setting aside the grace of God, they didn't want to even consider what they were hearing, even though there were some scriptures confirming that these are the practices of the church which belong to God. This is what they do for you to know. Because he said, test the story to see them. How can you? And I was giving you only one, one area as a bonus, as a gift. And since you are rejecting or frustrating the grace, you didn't want to hear. So it is not only unbelievers that are rejecting the grace of God, though. Even believers are, are even doing more. Unbelievers are rejecting the grace to come in. Believers are rejecting the grace to know the truth. And then some of them are rejecting the grace to even to get the teachings. Some of them are also rejecting the grace to even to walk out from bad places, wrong places. So he said they are in the so here God has opened the door for them to run away. Because there are some people who are in the synagogue of Satan. They don't know. They claim to be Jews, but they are not. And they don't know until they die. So, beloved, recently I, I, I disciplined myself. I understood something. When I made any statement, and you are you do not agree, said, no call for Allah. Because even Christ Himself, with all the miracles, people say we have seen the remarkable sign He performed, but we cannot believe Him. So it's not everybody that can believe everybody. So just take it easy with yourself. And any statement and any subject I take out here, for you to believe or don't believe doesn't change the reality. If I got it, if I get it wrong, for you to believe doesn't make it right. If I get it right, for you not believe doesn't make it wrong. So just take it easy with yourself. The message here today is don't frustrate the grace of God. God has been graciously tried as you are ready and you are serious to, to serve him. He's also tried to help you. His eyes is going around the whole world looking for people whose heart are fully committed to him so that he will remove them from all those bad places the other day, one prophet was in Ghana, was on the television with an interview. He was showing them 
how to get a quick group of your of the church. And the interviewer asked him, wow, he said, if you get two weeks, two weeks, baby, hey, hey, if you get two weeks, baby, your church will grow very fast. That means there are some churches that is not belong to God. So wherever you have found yourself, if you want to embrace the grace of God, all those points that we were discussing, the subject, you should have taken your Bible to read it. That is where the Baring Guild did and it helped them. They wrote, they wrote down the quotation. When they go home, then they go over to see what they heard or true or not. But you have been committed to some individuals known as ministers and some churches and you don't want to embrace any grace. You are frustrating the grace just as unbelievers are also frustrating Christ. The grace to accept Christ. All of us are going to hell. We have been condemned to hell. Christ is here to stop us. Come to him. All that you need to avoid going to hell is to come to Christ. And they said, no, you will not come. We have frustrated the grace to stop them from going to hell. You have also come. But that direction you are going, it will send you there. You will still go there. Let me give you the di let me show you the diagram. That direction that you have chosen is the same thing. You are going to meet the people that you, you run away. You decided not to go there with them. See the diagram very well. This is the world where you are and all of them were. And you heard the message so you embrace the grace of God to come to Christ. And you have come to Christ. So here is in Christ. This box is in Christ. And you see the churches. True churches, TC, true churches, and the wrong churches are the big ones. The wrong churches are the big ones, and the true churches are the small ones. And there are two roads here. Broad road and the narrow road, which Jesus Christ talked about. It. So you have come here, but this direction you have chosen, it will not take you to heaven, no. It will take you to Hades, where we are gathering the people that are going to hell. Right now, nobody is in hell. All the people that are dying, they are in Hades. You understand? So if you are in Christ, and you are chosen the broad way, the pastors are telling you only your heart. And one minister said, you believe, you lie to them and they believe it. I will tell you, I am going to bring those messages. The reason why they tell you lies and you believe. The born again experience wasn't right. You didn't get the proper born again. If you get the, if you truly born again, when they lie to you, you will see they are lying to you. So on Sunday, I was telling the church, I don't know anybody that is blessed more than me. Because when you talk of blessing, it's not about money or material thing or things that you see. For me to be in the position that nobody, no matter how your education, like I told you, some ministers who are highly educated, a theologian, come to me, they want to help me at the end. I rather tend to help them. And they do agree with me. I thank God for my life. If I didn't have anything, the grace to know the truth is enough. So, dearly beloved, you have been saved. Yes, I do agree with you. No, the one who said they need to be, they are also been saved. All the churches, everyone that believes in Christ Jesus, they are all been saved. But there is a road here which is broad. It doesn't lead to paradise. It leads to Hades. So if somebody is pointing to brother, this is the road, this is the road. And you reject it and you continue to enjoy this road. You have rejected the grace of God. So those who are here, who are rejecting the grace to come here, when they die, they will pass here, here, and then come and meet you here. 
you also come here, if you reject the grain to walk through the road, you also park through the broad road, come, 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 and you come here. So you come and meet the same place. So to me, the gay people you have been insulting them is not necessary. In case of if the where they have chosen, if they die, all of you come to the same place. In case of if your lifestyle is not walking you through the narrow way. So if you have come to Christ and you are walking in through, through the broad road and somebody is pointing to you, the brother, where you are walking toward to, it's dangerous. You are heading toward to that is the place that you didn't want to go and you ignore it. You have also frustrated the grace of God. And that is all he's talking about. I have like nine minutes. Let me quickly run through the rest. And then to first Timothy 5.15. He says, some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. How did they turn away to follow Satan? It's the same thing. They have turned away to follow Satan. When you pass this broad road, that is Jesus Christ's statement, and the Bible quotations are here. Matthew 7, 13 and 14, talk about it. And Luke chapter 13, verse 24, also talk about it. He said, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. If you fail to walk through the narrow door, you go through the, the broad road. It will not lead you to a paradise. So where you didn't want to go at the end, you will still make it over there. So don't frustrate this grace from saving you from continuing heading toward to destruction. Second Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, 15 and 16. 2 Peter 2, 16, 15 and 16. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Beza, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the, restrained the prophet madness, the prophet Madness. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam. So there are some ministers that have already chosen this road. They have chosen the broad road. They have left where they were going through this small way and they said no. Things are not going on so they have chosen this one and you are following them. They are not taking you to heaven. They are not taking you to paradise. They are taking you to Hades, where the devil is gathering the dead people for the battle. So my time is almost up. And then Acts of the Apostles chapter 28, verse 13, 23 to 31. Act 28, 23 to 31. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came even larger number to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God and from the law of Moses and from the prophet, he tried to persuade them about Jesus. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. After Paul had made this final statement, Paul was persuading them to come to Christ. Some convinced, some did not. And all of them began to walk one by one away from, away from Paul when he made some statement. That statement cut their heart. According to what they have heard earlier, that statement is not a good statement. That statement is not supposed to come from the man of God. So they rejected the grace to know the truth and to come to Christ. To the best of your knowledge, you have heard that every church is a church. So once you have found yourself in this church, eh, you are also good to go to heaven. So in the conclusion within the next, next five minutes, when you read the remaining ones, I'm trying to cut the time. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in, the, in his 
own rented house and welcome all who come who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus with all boldness and without hindrances. But when he made the final statement, and the statement are there, when he told them, he referred them. He referred them what had happened, what Isaiah the prophet had said earlier. Be provoked. Be offended. They began to leave him. Why? They have their freedom to leave them. And this is the now that the ministers that have come right now, they are experts of retaining the membership in order to add more. They know what they want. They do want the members want for them. The message the members want to hear, that's what they give to them so that they say them for them. No problem. They are gathering you for the battle against the world, against the Lord. Let me take you there. Because of the time, let me quickly run the conclusion. The devil is working hard through his subcontractors, that's the fourth minister, to deceive the people of God who, who are flattering him, to gather them in wrong churches in their mind to face God in the battles. Isaiah chapter 29, 13 to 16. Isaiah 29, 13 to 16. Second Thessalonians 2, 9 to 12. You see how the devil is gathering people in the churches that you don't know so that they will go and save God. Let me read that place for you and I'm, I'm done. Four minutes to go. Revelation chapter 20, if you have time, you can read 1, 1 to 10. But I'm reading 1 to 3 and 7 to 10. Revelation 20, 1 to 3 and 7 to 10. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the, having, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So the devil has a chance to deceive in some period. A time will come, he will be uh, captured and he will not have time to continue. But now, now that you are, you, are, you are on this world or you are in this world, now that I'm speaking to you, now that I'm giving you this knowledge, the devil has the chance to deceive as many as he can. Why? And what's the purpose? Verse 7 to 10. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nation in the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. To gather one for battle. So in my note. You will see it there. The devil is gathering people for the battle. The people don't know. They don't know that they, the devil is gathering them to go and fight their loving God. They claim they love him. They don't know. So the grace to open their eyes for them to run out from those places, they are rejecting the grace too. So it will take them by surprise. He's gathering them for battle. In number, they are like the son of the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camps of God's people, the city he loved. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet have been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And may the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. A word to the wise is enough. The grace to frust uh, the, frustrating the grace of God will cause you but not nobody. Some of the churches, the reason why the churches are not talking about obedience is that they are working for the devil. They have deceived you that all that you need to, to come into Christ. When you come into Christ, you are going to heaven. But they are lying. When you see the diagram, they are lying. Christ talk about the two roads. When you come to Christ, there are two roads. One go to Hades, where you didn't want to go. And one go to paradise. So when you come to uh, in Christ, it's not true that you automatically go to paradise. You can still go to Hades. You don't want to tell you this. They say no. 
Once you have been saved, you are going to heaven. No, they are lying. But that you have come close. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 said, by, the, by the, the blood of Christ, you have come very close, near. That means when you when you are here, so look at this diagram, somebody here. Kupo, I'm here, I was here. I was condemned to hell. Hell fire. I was supposed to go here and come here. And Christ's love came into this world to preach and I accepted Christ. He brought me here. Here, here, here. So when I come here, this is paradise. And I'm here. Look at where I was. And I've come here. And I'm in paradise. I'm close. It, it far, it's not far better than when I was here. So coming here is very, very, very good. But the ministers, the subcontractors are telling you that when you come here, you're already in paradise. They are deceiving you. That's what Pastor Minister Ochabel said. They, you lie to them and they believe it. You lie to them. And they believe it. They say when you come here, you will go to heaven when you die. They don't talk about the two road to you. They all talk about when you come here, you are going to heaven. So you are, but you have come close. Very, very close. I'm here in Texas. I'm driving to New York. When I get to New Jersey, I have come very close. From New Jersey to New York. It's very, very close. I've driven there before. I drove from Maryland to New York and I drove back. When I go to New Jersey, that means I'm almost there. If you are in Ghana, you are in Kumasi, you are travel all the way to Insawem, and you are going to Accra. You have come very close. You are in Ghana, you are going to Nigeria. You get to Benin. You have come very close. You are in Ghana, you are going to Cameroon. You get to Nigeria. You have come very close. You have not been dead. Nigeria is not Cameroon. Benin is not Nigeria. And Sawan is not Accra. New Jersey is not New York. New York. Are you, am, I, is, am I making sense? New Jersey is not New York, but that is very close. So you need to continue your journey. But frustrating the grace of God, we are ending up in another broad road. To hate this, why we didn't want to go. Why? Because of the people that are leading you. I will continue next week, if God permit. Maybe it will take me like two other days and I'm done. And I'll give you the bonus of the will of God. And I'm done. I walk out from here. I've done my task. I have finished my work. If I finish this, I'm done. I'll go into my church to feed them over there. May the Lord bless you. If you have any question, my number is 832-805-2912. If you want to write, whatever you are watching it, I will also see. Or they will send it to my email and I will get you over there. If you want to come to Christ, I will give you the main message. The message that you need to hear to come to Christ properly. I will give that and after that I will show you how to come to Christ. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord bless his wife, his word in Jesus' name. My name is Paul Ang. So come on your way next week if God permit. Bye-bye.